Good day, grade 10s. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at different types of compounds. First of all, we need to remember or know that compounds are formed when two or more atoms from different elements combine chemically. They combine in a specific ratio, and the atoms are bonded and or attached together by strong forces or bonds. The particles of compounds exist either as molecules or ions, so either as molecules or ions, and this depends on the type of bonds formed. There are two types of compounds, there are molecular compounds and ionic compounds. So let's look at these. Molecular compounds, the particles are individual molecules. They are held together by intermolecular forces or bonds. So examples are, for example, CO2, which is carbon dioxide, your methane, which is CH4, water, which is H2O, and I think this is SO2. In fact, I know it's SO2. But what you need to understand about this while we're looking at this is do you see how these different compounds are drawn differently? This here is called a space filler model. Okay, In other words, we've drawn it, so it's showing all the space that the atom or molecule should be taking up. Yeah, we've got what is called a ball and stick, where the sticks represent the bonds and the balls represent the different types of atoms. So in this case we've got a single bond there whereas here we've got a double bond. Let's carry on. So those are molecular compounds. Ionic compounds over. When a large number of positive and negative ions are held together in a crystal lattice, a large crystal lattice, we call it an ionic compound. So for example, the first one here is sodium chloride, table salt, we're used to it. This one looks very interesting. This is lead nitrate. Another one that's interesting is copper sulfate, and this is potassium permanganate. Now, why have I shown you all of these? The reason I've shown you all of these is because up to now, we've probably known that we've got table salt and it makes an ionic crystal lattice, but you need to be aware that not all of our crystal lattices are formed in these beautiful chloride, sodium, chloride, sodium little lattices, that they can be very interesting shapes and structures. Okay, so look at the lead nitrate, your copper sulfate, and your potassium permanganate. But they do have repetitive structures within your crystal lattice. Now there are three types of bonds. There's covalent bonding, ionic bonding, and metallic bonding. So let's talk about covalent bonding. Covalent bonding are when the electrons are shared between the atoms. It occurs mainly between nonmetals and results in a collection of atoms called molecules. So in other words, your molecular compounds are formed from covalent bonding. So here are some examples. Here you've got covalent bonding of your methane, exactly what we spoke about before. Here you've got a single bonded, a double bonded, and a triple bonded, um, covalently bonded molecules. So this would probably be nitrogen, this would be oxygen, and this could be hydrogen. So single bond, double bond, and triple bond of covalently bonded molecules. Ionic bonding, the electrons are transferred from one atom to another forming ions. So you've got positive ions which are called cations and you've got negative ions which are called anions and they are formed because the electrons are transferred. And this occurs between metals and nonmetals. So obviously they form ionic compounds. And remember that when you've got ionic compounds you get a crystal lattice. So this is a typical example of your sodium chloride drawn again in two different ways. Here's your ball and stick model, and this is your space filler model. Metallic bonding. Metallic bonding is very different. This occurs within metals. The positive ions are surrounded by a sea of delocalized electrons. So basically what you have is you have these electrons that can move around the positive ions, and they do not belong to one specific metallic positive ion, your cation. They can move around all the time. And examples of your metallic bonding are what happens in copper or sodium by itself. Now that you've learned all about the different types of bonds, we can move on. Thank you, grade 10. Have a wonderful day.